Just before we get perhaps involved in using the actual oscilloscope for this series of tests, I'd like just to take a very simplistic step back in mechanical assessment. And this means using the Pico Diagnostics platform for the compression test. Now you must appreciate that this is a relative compression test, it's a theoretical compression test, where an analysis is based on all of the, or the balance of compression against the cylinders. It's not actually a compression test in actual terms. To make it interesting, I'm going to use a valve which allows me to bleed off some pressure. So we're going to get, in effect, a poor value on one of the cylinders. So we can do some, some meaningful analysis. So let's set that particular part of the test up. I've already partly prepared the vehicle. I've taken out the spark plug. I've just chosen cylinder one. It's irrelevant for this particular demonstration which cylinder we are going to put the fault on, but basically I'm allowing a bleed of pressure from that cylinder to produce poor compression. That's the, uh, the idea. As you can see, I've estimated a leakage. <clears throat> And because this is a, a compression test based on, we're not using that just yet, based on the evaluation of voltage differential across the battery, potential difference, whereby during compression that will increase the voltage drop. Work done by the starter motor will increase the amount of voltage drop during compression. So theoretically, I've introduced the fault on cylinder one. We have channel one, the blue channel, connected across the battery. We need to exit the Pico oscilloscope software and engage the diagnostics platform, select the compression test. It's already default to four cylinders, which this vehicle is, and we are ready to conduct the test. So, I'll go around to the vehicle, which is now ready. Um, we have got battery support on as well. You may have noticed that already, just to keep the voltage on the battery at a healthy level that doesn't um, affect the accuracy of this test. So I'm going to conduct the cranking test and you can view the results. So I think we've got a very definitive conclusion here and this, this is actually an extremely accurate and satisfying test for me because the engine isn't running, we're not interested in ignition, we're not interested in fueling, we're interested in the third dimension. When dealing with an anomaly with combustion, and I use those words very carefully, there are three causes, ignition, fueling, or mechanical. The fact this engine isn't running, this test does prove conclusively there is a mechanical internal condition with that result. And I'm fairly satisfied with, with that at this level. But a student on one of my courses recently said, Frank, how does it achieve this result? Well, it does it from voltage drop. So I'd like to change this test and go back to the scope and show another means of doing this test that doesn't produce a bar graph, but actually does look at voltage and current flow through the battery during this test. So I'd like to now to set this next part of the test up, take me a couple of minutes to do so off camera, and then we're gonna go back to scope and do the same test, a non-start crank test, and actually prove we're looking for a 79% deficiency, or I should say, we're looking for around a 30% deficiency against the other cylinders, but measuring it perhaps differently, looking at current and voltage.